As you all know, uh, for the past 17 years, the U.S. Army uh, has continuously provided trained and ready forces to both Iraq and Afghanistan and, and elsewhere as we simultaneously uh, meet the needs of the combatant commanders around the globe. And today, uh, as it was throughout the year and last year, we have approximately about 180,000 uh, soldiers serving in 140 uh, countries around the world. Uh, and that represents, broadly speaking, about uh, 50 to 60 percent of combatant command demand uh, comes to the Army to support. Uh, Congress's support uh, has allowed uh, the Army to become significantly more combat ready today uh, than we were two and a half years ago when I became the Chief of Staff of the Army. We've increased the number of uh, combat training center rotations. We've improved equipment readiness rates, the spare parts. We've replenished our Army pre-position stocks. Uh, we've increased our personnel end strength and started to fill some of the holes in our operating units. And significantly, we've improved both our munitions uh, shortfalls uh, along with some of our critical infrastructure. Uh, we must be ready, though, uh, not only now, uh, but in the future. And we have to maintain a decisive overmatch uh, to achieve victory, as the Secretary said, against any adversary, any time, anywhere. Uh, the tyranny of the present uh, has consumed us uh, for the past 16 years, while our competitive advantage against peer threats uh, has eroded. Uh, and advances by our adversaries are very real. Uh, this is not a classified hearing, but I'll be happy to uh, illuminate those advances in a classified hearing specifically with respect to Russia and China, as they continue to assert regional influence in their development of advanced weapons and technology. Likewise, Iran is attempting to expand its regional influence. And as we all saw last week in a recent positive turn of events regarding North Korea, it's very welcome and, and I remain cautiously optimistic, as Secretary of Defense Mattis said. Uh, but we, the Army, we must remain ready. We must remain ready to present options to the President for his consideration uh, if required, and we will do that. The current battlefield is already lethal, and the future battlefield is likely to prove more lethal than anything we have ever recently experienced. So the time is now for the Army to modernize, uh, to both stay ready today and to build the future force of our nation. That's going to require a modern Army. The Army needs predictable, adequate, sustained, and timely funding, and you know that, and you all agree with that. The Army's FY19 budget request reflects our priorities to grow and maintain a highly capable force today, to modernize and build the future force, to take proper care of our soldiers, family members, and civilians, and all the while to being good stewards of the generous money of taxpayer money that the Congress has given us. We recognize the American taxpayer entrusts us with a significant amount of money to meet these demands, and we will be diligent stewards of our resources, and we will enforce accountability to make effective use of every single dollar. Your support for the FY19 budget will ensure the soldiers of the United States Army remain ready to fight tonight as we prepare for any unforeseen conflicts of tomorrow. Thank you again for the opportunity to testify, and I look forward to your questions.